Hello everyone and welcome back into another GT video and PD just released an update 149 and we have so many things to talk about and there's so many features that I would like to explain and go through so I would really like to begin with a new track which is I think it's a very nice addition to the game we can go through the files we can go and read the full text but I would really like to explain so the track is Eiger Norwand and we also have six more cars in the game, there are six new cars in the game. I think the track is pretty nice, I played, I think I played, well, just about 30 minutes in the new time trial with the new Subaru Rally car from the 98 and I think it's, well, I think it's a wonderful addition to the game. Scenery looks amazing, you can also see all of these pictures uh, with the Subi, I think it's just an amazing thing and I think it's going to be... Well, I think it's going to be a really nice addition into the game. But the next thing that I would like to address here, except from all of the other cars and all of the other things that have been changed, is the new physics. New physics is something that... Oh man, I don't even know where to begin when we're talking about the new physics, but it has completely changed the game. Just the cars feel so different, the BOP has changed everything. Different things work in a different way. Braking, acceleration, turning cornering, astro usage, everything, absolutely everything. So all of these things cannot go without some issues and the force feedback is one of them. Unfortunately, my Fanatec was on firmware 455 and I thought it was something wrong with it. I definitely thought, okay, this is not supposed to be like this. It's, <laughs> it's just not. So the force feedback needs to be improved and this definitely isn't an improvement. I'm using a Club Sport DD Plus, so if you're using a GTDD Pro or any of the other wheels, I think you are okay. So I went into, I think it was not the Fanatec website, it's their blog, and also the link is gonna be down in the description, and I installed a beta firmware, I think it's 457. So the latest one, you can install it, I had absolutely no issues with it, and just when I installed it, absolutely everything worked perfectly and i don't know why this isn't in issue notes and they haven't announced it yet but this is an issue with the dd plus dd extreme and i think it's also with the formula bundle so make sure that if you have this issue if the feedback seems weird and kind of i would say a little bit laggy in some areas go and install the new beta firmware from the Fanatec website and it's going to solve your issues. Let's go to sport mode first and we have a couple of new things. So for example, if you go to this Eiger Norwand, so the physics have completely changed and I think this is this is now the way to control the car. I don't necessarily think this is the right way, but it's the way that cars work. So I'm just going to focus on gearing we can just watch it from this angle. I'm just going to focus on gearing and I'm also going to focus on how much slip angle there is. So you can see jumping six gear, brakes. You can see now first gear is going to be second but quickly third on the way out. You can see a lot of sliding with this car. Third gear on the way out, skipping gears, fourth gear, a lot of short shifting, a lot of gear changes, second Again, you can see this car is sliding a lot. Four gear, short shift. Fifth gear, again, short shift. Six gear, short shift. Short shifting all the time. See, a lot of sliding on entry. This is a change in GT right now. Fourth, fifth on the way out to avoid the additional understeer. And you will see a biggest change in here when the car starts sliding. I know this is a rally car, but look at this. Amazing. Absolutely amazing sliding. And once again, let's go to this last section, straight up brakes, second gear, you can see the car is going very, very wide, but now into fifth gear on the way out of this corner. And this is what you need to do to get a 103.1 and hold it an amazing job here. And he was also using weak ABS. You will see some significant changes. For example, global leaderboards is now filled with GR Supras because we also had a BOP update. So yesterday, I don't know how much time it spent, I barely got 217.1 and I was really struggling to get a 217.1. All of a sudden, today, 269, like it's not even there, which got me into 36th place in the world. I'm not complaining, 
I'm just saying that the BOP is much different and everything that you think about or see with this with these cars it's completely different feeling and just it's a completely different concept of racing while if we go to leaderboards in daily race c which is using which is using group four cars you will be able to see that the lap times haven't changed so the lap times are not changed from the update here so group three cars became faster but also it feels to me that they are heavier so you need to break a lot sooner so i think Usually you would break like a little bit before the curb, but now you need to break at more than a hundred. I would say just a 50 meters difference or not 50, like 30 to 40, which is a significant difference. But if you see these cars, you'll be able to see that the cars became very, very snappy. And when I say snappy, it really means, okay, we are approaching our turning point. We are approaching our braking zone. Now we cannot use all of the track possible because that's the dirty part of the track usually at <laughs> road atlanta it was it was really amazing when you think about it you could use almost all of well you could use all of the circuit but now if you use the curb and the grass no way that you're gonna make it into that turn without sliding and that's exactly what changed it so you cannot use well, you can use Astro, you can use the curbs more, but you could not use, let's say, the grass on the right, like completely full car on the grass, at least not in the way that it's controlled. So this is a significant change, and I think this is going to significantly change the game in the long run. So these times that you see here, these are all the times with, let's say, abusing the track limits, and we cannot abuse the track limits anymore. So this is a major change. We have so many other changes. I mean, I can only address a couple of things from my list, and basically I made a list about it. Who understeer. I would say a lot more understeer, but also a lot more oversteer. So you need to be very subtle, and you need to be very... I would say controlled when it comes to turning when you're braking so trail braking needs to be very smooth and out if you don't want to lose the back end of the car and once again this is a significant change so you cannot okay get into the braking point brake and turn and still still think that the car is going to make it no the back of the car now will slide and it's going to make a lot of difference so i think the gap now between all of the drivers it's going to be even more significant than it was so let's say the a plus drivers will eventually get used to it but the difference between a and a plus now it's going to be much much bigger so i think this will completely change the game in the long run i found that tcs tcs is now well it's a big downside i tried using tcs with group three cars and I think sometimes in some of the corners you can lose up to a tenth and a half, maybe even two tenths. So this is a significant difference, I would say. Depends on the corner, depends on the car, but I highly advise not to use TCS. Really, don't use TCS and any of the other assists. Maybe I'm going to say you can use it with a couple of cars that are extremely twitchy, but this will eventually make you slower. On the other side, I think sliding on corner entry will eventually increase tire wear, but only on the front tires. So the rear tires I actually tried to do a couple of donuts. I did a couple of donuts for, well, I, I actually spent like 30 seconds doing donuts and the rear tires were fine. So almost nowhere on the rear tires. On the other hand, while I tried moving the wheel from one side to another at high speeds, they were just gone. The front tires were gone. And I think this is the biggest difference when it comes to tire wear so you cannot enter the corners in the same way so understeer will be a significant downside if you're in a let's say in a race that uses like heavy multipliers like i would say times six five seven and maybe even more even if you're using a longer race when you're just having times two times three it can be a significant impact on your performance in the long run sometimes even making some cars not even a viable option so you can you simply won't be able to use some cars and race like i did so in daily race c i tried a v8 vantage and that car was i would say pretty good on tires while i watched some of the other cars and some of the other guys use kind of a different approach and their tires were absolutely gone so in the last couple of corners they just couldn't break. They just couldn't turn. So it's a significant difference in tire wear now. So you don't even have to think about, okay, I'm going to get the tires up to 90% and then I'm going to pit. No. If you get the tires just about 60 to 70% wear, 
bit change the tires because you will be significantly slower per lap, sometimes even two seconds off. So it's, it is a significant difference now. Okay, let's put all of the issues aside. My opinion is that we will soon have a patch. I think update 150 is, I would say, a couple of days away. So I think this update 149 isn't going to stay here. Uh, for a long time, we will definitely get a patch to kind of smoothen out some of the things in this one. But I do believe this is a positive change in GT, and I definitely think this will make... Uh, oh, this is going to make the game much more enjoyable and maybe even closer to reality. So once again, guys, please let me know what do you think about this update and if you would like to change something. Again, thank you very much for watching this video, and until the next time, bye.